All right, so what we're going to do here is we are going to open PhotoP and we're going to go through some of the very, very basics of the program. Let's start with the program itself. So the program you can put into the bar up here or search it, but it is photo and then P, P -E -A com. Now photo P is a free software that you can use uh, from mostly anywhere. It is ads. Uh, there are ads that come up and we don't have anything affiliated with the ads or anything. It's just a free program. Um, and what we are going to see is basically it is like a Photoshop program. So what we're going to see, I don't know if I can actually you know, you can't close the ads. Um, there are ways I've heard to get rid of those, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to go over the program. So a couple things um, you will see is there are here we have file. File is how we're going to open a new project or an existing project or from a URL. We could also take a picture, which would access our webcam. Uh, we can publish things online, which would create a web address for whatever we've made the art of. Uh, or we can export them. So we'd, export means save. So we would save them as a PNG, a JPEG, um, or a PDF. Again, there's lots of options here. We'll go over that. So the very first thing I want to talk to you about is we have the toolbar on the left here, and this allows us to manipulate the image. Up here we have actual uh, icons that will allow us to open things, adjust things. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, if I want to open a blank document, I'm simply going to go to File, New. And you'll notice that it's set up in pixels, not inches. Because really it's thinking more about producing something, um, the, the level of pixels is how high quality the image will be. So some of you may have actually played old video games in the past, like a Super Nintendo or a regular Nintendo. For example, the regular Nintendo, like the original Mario Brothers, is in 8-bit. That means it's 8 pixel bits. So that's why it looks real blocky. Um, when you look at the Super Nintendo, which would be like Super Mario World, that's where Yoshi is, that's 16 bits. So again, we have a higher number of pixels involved, and therefore we have, uh, it looks a little more like a realistic image. Not so much at the Super Nintendo, but today uh, with like an Xbox or PlayStation, the pixel levels are going to be through the roof uh, to the point where you can almost make it look photorealistic. For our sake, um, it's not going to matter too much for now. You can also notice down here, it allows us to make uh, like Facebook uh, page covers. If we're making an Instagram image, like art specifically for it, a YouTube cover, uh, we have all those things. So let's say I want to make some digital art and I want to post it to Instagram. So it's basically telling me this is the best format. Okay. It's a square and it's showing, hey, this is kind of how it's going to look. And I'm going to hit create. So you'll notice the white comes up. I had white selected. Uh, we could have done transparent, but I selected white. And a couple things, I'm going to move my head over here. A couple things is once we have that open, we are able to then work in any of these areas, such as the paintbrush. And it's similar to what you would think of as with like a Windows paint, just more complex. So the very first thing you're going to notice is if I do click something like the paintbrush, any of them that have a small arrow in the corner means that if I hold it down, hold the, I'm clicking the right button on the mouse, it's going to give me options such as pencil tool, color replacement, brush tool, same here with selections. Anything that again has that arrow, I will be able to have options. All right. So just for the sake of simplicity, let's go ahead and start. I'm going to click the brush tool. And down here we have our brush palette. Right now I am set to black. If you click these, it actually, just wherever you drag and drop. So again, if I want red, I have red. If you want light pink, I've got pink. If I need to change the color again, you change it in this bar. What's neat about this screen is you can actually see the number that the color registers as. Uh, you may not have known this, but every color that you see in things like advertising, any, any design, any graphic design, they have a number code. So you could actually find the exact color of you know, whatever it is, like the, the Marvel logo has an exact color, so that when those people go to make a different design using the Marvel logo, they're always using the exact same 
number that's right here. So let's just say I want to use this nice dark purple, or actually it's a violet. And then up here, you'll see I have 15. I have the brush. This is all the different types of brushes. We have to load them. Here we have our size of brush. So again, we can change the type of brush. So if we want it to be a streak, more of a spray, or just the traditional circle. We can change the hardness, which is how um, dark it would push, or how solid the color will look. We can change the size. So we have, you know, there's 81 pixels. There's one pixel, you can't see it. Let's see if you can see, here's 10 pixels, okay? So again, size. Now, the main thing that these programs let us do is they let us make mistakes, and that's really important in art. In art, you're gonna make mistakes. I constantly make mistakes in art. The goal of art is to learn from those mistakes or to modify those mistakes and make them into new ideas and move forward. So if I were to take a drawing and there's some purple, and I wanted to add another thing to this. Let's say I don't want purple. Let's say now I want red. Well, there's a few options. One is I could just draw straight on top. There's my red. But the reason that a Photoshop style program is awesome is because for one, you can just edit undo whenever you want to go back and forth. Okay. You could even you can just keep stepping back or forward, the same as edit, undo. But the way it really works, the way we'd really want to use this is through what's over here. And you'll see where it says layers. Layers are the main reason we use this program. The layers actually allow us to think of them as transparencies, where we have a piece of paper and then another piece of paper is being laid on top of it, a clear sheet of paper. So if we make a mistake on this piece of paper, we didn't affect the bottom piece, we just removed the top. So what you can do is over here in the layers palette, you're gonna be able to make a new layer, copy, all sorts of stuff. The very first thing we need to do though is unlock our current layer. So if you look over here in the corner, you will see that small lock. Just click on it and make it go away. Now that it has been unlocked, I can do a lot of more things to this background layer. One of them being delete it. Okay, so if you delete it, you just be careful unless you just undo it anyways. So a couple of things that we have down here in the bottom of the screen of the layers palette, that's what this is called, the layers palette. Um, we have, uh, we can link them together, which is like merge them, we can do the contrast, we can do a mask, we can set files, but this is what we need to talk about today. So right there it says new layer and next to it there's a trash can. If I click new layer by itself, it's going to make a clear transparent layer. I can actually click on that text and I can name it whatever I want. In this case, I'm going to call it red. The background layer, since it's been unlocked, I can mess with it. So I'm going to rename it purple. And the reason we want to layer, uh, excuse me, the reason we want to name our layers is because I've had projects where I'll have over 40 layers. Okay, very, when I do stencils, um, every single little piece of the stencil will be a different layer. And I, and I do that with collage too. So a lot of times I'll end up with lots and lots of layers. And when I go back to work on something, it's a lot easier if it says a specific thing than, oh, it's layer number 36, you know, if you name it what it's actually you know, a piece of, it'll be easier to find. Now, something else you may notice is when I click on the different layers, I can select them. So if I were to select the red layer and then draw all over, you'll notice that in the layer there's now red and in this layer there's purple. Where the eyeballs are, are going to allow me to turn a layer off and on to my eye. It doesn't delete the layer, it just makes it not visible. So if I click the eyeball for the purple, it is gone. If I click it again, it comes right back. Again, I can click this one, or unclick it. If I hate the red layer and I don't want it to stick around, 
all I have to do is grab it and drag to the trash can. Again, if I'm like, oh no, I really didn't mean to do that, I can just edit, undo. So it's really, really nice, especially if you're nervous about taking risks when it comes to art. Working digitally is a great way to do it. It allows us to really manipulate things and not have to worry about what's going to happen. Something else to consider is the order that these are in. The red is currently on top of the purple because it is on top of the purple layer. If I were to drag it underneath and let go, the red has disappeared, even though the eyeball is still on. And the reason is that the purple layer is actually a white background with purple. It's not a clear layer. Therefore, I cannot see through the white layer. However, if I were to erase on that, so this is the eraser, and you'll notice there are different erasers. We use the regular eraser. But if I were to click, and again, if I were to click on the purple layer, you have to be on the layer you want to manipulate. My brush is very small right now, so let's go ahead and make a, a nice big eraser. So if I go to erase, the red is right behind it. And while we can see this, let's go ahead and talk about the checkers. So if you notice that gray and white screen, that means that it is clear. That is the symbol for clear in Photoshop or Pixlr or PhotoP or whatever the photo manipulation software is you use. That's the standard. So when you see something like that, it means it is clear. So right now you can see the purple layer is now totally clear. So if I were to put purple on here now, you can see the purple on top of a blank, or sorry, a clear background, but you still can't see the red. The reason you can't see the red is because it's not turned on. So you see the eyeball, let's click it. And there it is. Again, we have the purple on top of the red. Let's add one more layer and then we'll stop there. Again, I can click here to make a new layer, but what if I wanted the same layer duplicated? Well, all I'm going to do is click that, drag that down, and instead of the trash can this time, I'm going to let go while it's on the new layer palette, or sorry, the new layer icon. And boom, there it is. So now I can actually sandwich the red in between the two. It doesn't look like much, but let's see if it showed up. This time what I'm going to do, and again, we've gone over the eraser tool. We've gone over some drawing tools. And this tool right here is the move tool. Now it's only going to move the layer that I'm on top of, or sorry, that I'm clicked on. So I'm going to click the top layer, and it's going to allow me to move that layer. So again, neither of these are moving just the layer I'm on. So even if I move it way over here, you can see it moved in this small window. These aren't affected. All right, let's delete that layer. And let's add a different color just so we can see. There we go. So again, we can see the yellow is in the foreground. That's the thing closest to us. The red is in the middle ground, it's in the middle, it's sandwiched in there. And the purple is the background, it is the furthest thing from us. And again, we should understand that we can turn off a layer or on a layer. Again, we can use the edit, undo, or step backward to go back. We should understand that layers can be added. And we should also understand how to open, or sorry, how to start just through new, a new image. So let's problem shoot. Let's say I wanted to draw this green. I am going to only draw that green on the yellow layer. I have selected green, I'm on my brush tool, and I'm coloring away but it's not working. I'm holding the button down, but nothing's happening. Huh. It even showed up red, or green, over here on the red, but 
but it still didn't show up in my image. What's happening? Well, hopefully you guessed what it is. The layer's not on. I colored all over in an invisible layer. It's still there, I just don't have the eyeball turned on. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Ugh, that's a mess. So again, you have to remember which layer you're on. So if you want to add the green to the yellow, well, we didn't. We were on the wrong layer. Oh man, it's the end of the world. Not really. All you have to do, edit, undo. It's gone. Actually, we have to do more than edit, undo. That just turned off our eye. Let's step back. Let's step back. And now it's gone. So, you have to be on the correct layer or you're going to manipulate what you don't want to. So if I wanted that green on the yellow layer, the first thing I need to do is make sure I'm on the yellow layer in the layers palette. Once I'm on that layer, we're going to rename it yellow and green. Now, there we go. So I'm able to say, hey, here are all my colors together, and I can turn off the yellow-green layer, and nothing has been affected by the other layers. They're all separate. The more you can separate your layers, the less likely you are to run into problems in the future. Keep that in mind. So again, we have layers. We have the brush tool. We have um, using the trash can, duplicating, opening files, all sorts of stuff. Lastly, Let's talk about saving. File, you can save it as a PSD. Works pretty good. We can also export. We could export it if we want it as a JPEG, but let's talk about that. If you save it as a JPEG, our layers will disappear. It would be the same as taking all three of those yellow, green file, red file, and purple file, printing them out, pouring glue all over it, and putting them together. We cannot undo that. So keep that in mind. Once you save it as a JPEG, you cannot go back. So I always advise people to save one as a JPEG, over here, one as a JPEG, and one as a PDF, or sorry, I would use a PNG. Um, you can use a PSD file, really. PSDs are what you want to use. So if you want to use it, and manipulate it later and you're not turning it in you want to save it as a psd let's click that and there it is new project and i would have renamed that but again if you save it as a psd you cannot send it to me in google classroom you have to save it as a jpeg for google classroom when you turn in an assignment and we'll go over this more i'll make a story after that when you want something to work on though for you to keep that is going to be saved as a PSD. Now, I know that was a lot of information. Rewatch the video as you want or ask me questions about it, but that is the bare basics of Photopedia.